you're back. I'm back. We're back. We're back together for another edition of Can I Pass slash Kick the Crap Out of the New York State Algebra 2 Trigonometry Readings Exam. Yes, you can. Yes, you can if you do the work. If you're here to cheat, you're in the wrong place. Put your pen, put your, put your mouth, turn the video off and go do your own work. If you're not here to cheat and you're here to get some work done and you're here to learn something, let's go. It's January 2013. We're going to do problems 15 through 27 in this video. So January 2013, 15 through 27. I have no idea what page I'm on. It looks like I'm on page 6. So what we will start is with this problem right here. The question says, what is the sine, the sine of theta? Well, here's my angle theta. Now, the one thing you needed to recognize about this thing is that the, the hypotenuse is 1 in this right triangle. And isn't sine opposite over hypotenuse? Well, in this case, so sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. But wait a second. We can get rid of the hypotenuse because we know the hypotenuse is 1. So really, sine of theta is really just equal to opposite. Because this was opposite, not zero. Opposite. Well, opposite is ST. So the answer is ST, or in this case, TS. Elliot. No, just kidding. Um, there we go. The area of this triangle is 42. If I don't like the BC is approximately. So if you have a triangle, oh, that was a terrible triangle. Well, let's go A and B. It looks like the hat from Harry Potter. I don't forget what it's called, the sorting hat or something like that. Um, angle B, oh, I got to put angle, okay, so this is my 61 degree angle, plus or minus like 7 or 8 degrees there, and AB is 8, we want to find BC, we'll call it little a, because that's where it is, opposite little a, and we know that the area is 42, alright, so this is where you come over here, you go, oh yeah, I got an area formula right here, one half AB sine C, now you got to be careful, it doesn't mean A and B and C. It means whatever the two sides are and the angle in between. So in this case, the two sides are here and here, and here's the angle in between. That's that side, angle, side. So I want to use this formula. 42 is equal to 1 half 8 times A times cosine of 61. All right, so let's do this. What's half of 8? 4. Great. I don't, I don't know. Actually, what we're going to do is, this is just, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide by 0. 0.5 times 8 times cosine 61. Over here, we're going to divide by 0. 0.5 times 8 times the cosine of 61, because that gives us just A over here. So I come over to my calculator. I say, okay, calculator. I got You're going to be working overload. You're working overtime on this one. We've got some craziness to do. We're going to take the 42, and we're going to divide by, control division, 1 half. That's a nice thing about this calculator. Times 8 times cosine Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Did I just put cosine in this problem? Let's look at the formula. Formula says sine. This is where you make dumb mistakes. This is where you make the dumb mistakes. You don't drink enough Brugger's coffee before you try to do a little bit of math. By the way, you guys are way too young to be drinking coffee. I'm just saying. So this actually should be sine of 61. Brain cramp. Sine of 61. I fixed it. All right, moving on. So, oh, we don't need that. We need to go back to calculator. So, sine of 61. And when I type that in, I get 12.0005. So that's my answer, 12.005. Now, I'm just curious. Just because I'm curious. I wonder what would have happened. I'll bet if we put in cosine, we would have gotten one of the other answers. So I'm just very curious about this. Just curious if one of the, because that's the way I would write the test. Cosine of 61. 
and you get 21.65, so maybe 21.7. Yeah, there it is right there. Had you accidentally picked cosine, you'd be like, deed, I got that problem right. No, you did something stupid. You must have been watching Mr. Krause's videos and accidentally did the same damn thing he did. Ooh, darn thing, sorry. When factored completely, okay, so what you're looking for is the biggest one. So you're looking for maybe this one or maybe this one. Maybe maybe this one, probably not this one. I'm looking at this one, I see x squared minus 16. Not gonna be the right answer. So we gotta figure out what we're gonna do. So the first thing, whenever you have four terms is you know you're gonna group these puppies. Kaching, kaching. So in this first group, I can take out an x squared. I'm left with three x minus five. And this next one, I can take out a minus 16. You always want to copy over this sign, by the way. And I get uh, 3x minus 5. Now, those parentheses have to match if you're doing this. So that's your first set of parentheses, 3x minus 5. Do we have a 3x minus 5? 3x, so this one doesn't have a 3x minus 5. These two do, and this one's the more complicated one. So I'm going to guess it's probably 4. x squared minus 16. And yeah, that can be factored to x plus 4, x minus 4. Oh, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We only have one 3x minus 5, not 2. Now, let me show you something. This says we have four answers. This says we have a negative 4, plus or minus 4. And then this one would give me, well, no, that, that would give me a double root. It's actually, this is the right answer right here. And this is a fourth degree. See how there's four x's? That would be an x to the fourth. You can't have that. So that's not it. Okay, so choice three. Moving on. Moving on up to the top. I know you're wondering why. Man, why'd you go into math when you're such a crazy good singer? I know. I know. Woo. The value of sine 180 plus x is equivalent to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use this formula. Right here, sine of A plus B. Now, if you don't have your formula sheet, I'll pause this if you need to pause it because I'm going to get rid of it real quick. It's sine A, cosine B, cosine A, sine B. So I'm going to do that real quick back over here. So that's going to be the sine of 180 times the cosine of X plus the cosine of 180 times the sine of X. Hmm. Well, let's see. I think we can do this one. The sine of 180 is 0. So 0 times this goes away. Just gone. The cosine of, of 180 is negative 1 times the sine of x. So there it is, negative sine x. Bam. Kabam. We're done. All right, so... Do you notice that I can't find my mouse pointer again? There it is. So did you notice that we have a cube root here and a cube root here? So we're looking for perfect cubes. So I come over here and I'm going to rewrite this. The cube root, I'm just going to do it this one first. 6, a to the fourth, b squared. Now. 6 is not a perfect cube. Your perfect cubes are 1, which is boring. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. Those are the only perfect cubes you should be looking for. 6 is not on that list. So I can't do anything with 6. I'm going to rewrite it. Now I'm going to rewrite A as A cubed times A. I wrote it as, there's still four A's there, A to the fourth, excuse me, but I wrote it as a perfect cube and not a perfect cube. And then B squared, you have to have three in order for it to be a perfect cube, so I'm just going to write B squared. Uh, I don't know why I wrote cubed. Let me get rid of that cube. That should be a squared. That should be a squared. So the only thing I can take the square root of or cube root of is this, and the cube root of A cubed is just A. So this whole thing turned out to be A cube roots of 6ABC squared. Now, if I add these up, I'm going to need a 
AB, AB squared. And this is going to be my answer right here. Because there's not another one with 6AB squared. So I know that's my right answer. Let's just make sure I'm right. So the cube root of 3. Now, you may not know it, but 162, 27 goes into it. And guess how many times? Oh, yeah, 6. 27 times 6. I'm going to rewrite the other things as a cubed times a and b squared. And this one, I'll hack this one out. This is 3, and this is a. So this whole thing becomes 3a cube roots of 6ab squared. And if I combine those, since they are exactly the same, I get 4a cube roots of. That's why that's the answer. All right, we start at a max, and we end at a max. And in between, we have a minimum. This is a cosine curve. Because it's going and starting at a max, it's a positive cosine curve. Its amplitude is 2. Now, the only thing left i got to figure out is what is the B value, because that's the hard part about this problem. What is the B value? That doesn't say valve. So if you remember correctly, period is equal to 2 pi over B. So we need to figure out, we know we got an X here. We just got to figure out what this B value is going to be. And so this math is a little bit tricky. Now you need to understand the definition of period is the time or distance or length of things it takes to complete one full curve. Well, I hope that you see that we have one full cosine curve, and it completed it in 2 pi over 3. So my period is 2 pi over 3. That's not the B value. So it's got to be one of these two, and since this is the only one that's cosine, that's the answer. But let's just make sure we see how we get it. So I'm going to replace, we have period is equal to 2 pi over 3, or 2 pi over b. I'm going to replace p with 2 pi over 3, and I'm going to say that's equal to 2 pi over b. Well, it should be kind of, duh, b is 3. There we go. That's why choice 1 is the answer. Moving on, kids. We're just moving. We're flying. We're cruising. All right, P varies inversely. Bam, as soon as I see that, kids, as soon as I see that, I'm going to write P times Q equals P times Q. That's the varies inversely formula. I know your teachers probably taught you P times Q equals K and then set it equal to K and the K value. And then set it, I like P times Q equals P times Q. Sub them in and you're done. So when P equals 20, Q equals negative 2. 20, negative 2. This one says... And P equals X, ooh, they're going to get hard on us. P equals X when Q equals negative 2X plus 2. All right, we got work to do. I thought this was going to be an easier one. So this is negative 40. Let me get, let me get to a different color. This is negative 40 equals negative 2X squared plus x. Now, since this is a quadratic, I don't want to have a negative x squared. So I'm going to move everything to this side. And I'm going to write it over here. 2x squared minus 2x. Remember, those two things are coming to the left side, so they get their sign change. Minus 40 equals 0. I'm going to factor out the GCF. 2x squared minus x minus 20 equals 0. And then I'm going to factor this puppy. Ka ching ka ching ka ching So, x and x minus 5 and plus 4. So my two answers are x equals 5 and x equals negative 4. And the question says then x equals 5 and negative 4. And there it is, choice 1. Be careful. I'll have kids do all this work and pick 3. Ugh. Don't mess up. 
All right, so I'm going to do this the very intelligent way, and I'm going to do this the, okay, you got it. So really what I'm going to do is just divide by negative square roots of 2. And I'm going to say, okay, secant of x is equal to 2, put the negative up front, 2 over radical 2. But isn't this really just the reciprocal of cosine? So really what this is is cosine of x, is, and I'm going to just flip this over, is equal to negative radical 2 over 2. And if you remember correctly, radical 2 over 2 yields 45 degree reference angles. Where is cosine negative? In quadrants 2 and 3. So I need to pick the quadrants 2 and 3 with reference angles of 45. And that would be the right answer right there. Now, what you didn't need to do that, you could have just come over here and said, okay, damn, escape. Just hit inverse. Oh, crap, we got something in there. Okay, get out of my screen. Enter. Okay, so inverse secant of 2 divided by the square root of 2. Now, you couldn't put the negative in. And that gives you 45 degrees. Again, that's just giving you the reference angle. Then you have to remember that secant and cosine are negative only in the third quadrant. And that's why that's the answer. All right, so, wow, this, they're really easy. They gave you the discriminant is 24. Now, if you remember correctly, the discriminant is b squared minus... If you remember correctly, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac, which is really found under a radical. So if this turns out to be negative, we're going to go through them all, then we have imaginary roots. It's not negative, so we do not have imaginary roots. If it's equal to 0, then we have rational equal roots. It's not equal to zero, so we don't have equal roots. So we know it's the, the two unequals. The only difference between these is rational and irrational. Well, let me ask you a question. Does anybody off the top of their head tell me what the square root of 24 is? I know it's close to 5. If I take the square root of it, I know it's close to 5 because 25 would be 5. Oh, it's 4.8989745. Does that look rational to you all? Does that look like something you can turn into a fraction? Absolutely not. The answer is choice four. It is irrational. Kabam. How many six-letter arrangements can be made using the words tattoo? So, if they were just six letters that were all different, it would be six factorial, which would be 720. Not the right answer, because we got to get rid of the repeaters. Well, in this case, there is a 3 factorial for the t's, and we're also going to multiply by the 2 factorial for the o's. So come over to the calculator. I do control division. I do 6. Come down here. This is where your factorial button is. That's the easiest way to get to it. Factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial. I didn't really need to put in 2 factorial because 2 factorial is just 2. Enter, and you get 60, and there's your answer, chillin'. 60 is the right answer. We've got three left on this video, and then we're okay. View, 100%, no, page width. All right, kids. I want you to see something here, because I want you to start to recognize it. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. Do you see? Look at their denominators. While I'm writing this stuff out, and you've probably already done this work, I hope, You've probably noticed there's something strange about their denominators. Did you notice that one of them was 2y minus 6 and the other one was 6 minus 2y? If you had those and you were trying to cancel them, can you cancel? What does 2y minus 6 over uh, 6 minus 2y make? If you cancel those, don't those make the negative 1 rule? And the reason they make the negative 1 rule is because... I can take out a negative. And if I take out a negative, I'm left with 2y minus 6. Now let's think about that for a second. And then anytime you see something backwards, you can do this. Wouldn't this be negative 2? Why? Which is what I have there. And wouldn't this be positive 6? Which is what I have over there. So I'm not going to keep the negative down there. I'm going to throw it up here on the top. So what I end up with is now I have a common denominator. 
get rid of the negative, I throw in the top. Now I have a common denominator. So I have 3y minus 9 over 2y minus 6. Okay. But, uh, and, oh, look, there's my answer. I'm all done. This is how you don't get 100 on a test. In simplest forms means you're going to have to do something else, kids. And take a look. If I take out a 3 out of the numerator, I'm left with y minus 3. If I take out a 2 out of the denominator, I'm left with y minus 3. A ka ching ka -ching, not the right answer. 3 halves is the right answer. Come on, chillin'. There we go. All right, so anytime I see an A, I can replace it with log 2. Anytime I see a B, I can replace it with log 3. Oh. Wow, 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 wow. This one is a killer. I got to drink some coffee for it. This was a hundred killer. So if you remember correctly, I can take this and make it log nine minus log 20. Now, nine's not bad. That's the easy part, believe it or not, even though you're probably looking at going, what the hell does that help me out with? Because really what this is is log of three squared. And I can take the two out front. So really what this is is two log three. And since log three is really just a b, this turns out to be just 2b. So I need 2b. Gone. Ooh, that might be it. This is the hard part. So what we're going to do is subtract this off. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as log of... Now, why would anybody think to do this? It's tough. Uh, not too many people would think to do this. Log of 2 plus log of Remember, this is really 2 times 10, so I can turn that into an addition problem. So this is really minus log of 2. Well, log of 2 is just A. And log of 10, that's the, hard, that's the really hard part. Log base 10 of 10 is really just a 1. So what I have here is minus A minus 1. And there's my answer. <whistles> Take a deep breath on that one, kids. That one was tough. All right, let's get to work on this. We're going to double distribute here. That's what squared means. Don't you dare write x squared plus i squared. Man, you get beat up there doing things like that. I just, mm. It's x plus i times x plus i. So that gives me x squared plus xi plus x i plus i squared minus, ooh, got this mess, x minus i times x minus i. Now notice that minus causes all kinds of problems if you don't forget, if you don't remember to distribute. So when I double distribute this, I get x squared minus x i minus x i plus i squared. So if I clean all this up, I get x squared plus 2xi plus i squared minus x squared minus 2xi minus i squared. And this cancels with this. This cancels with this. Oh, and this should have been a plus because a minus times a minus is plus. So I end up with 4xi, kids, and there's my answer. Now, I'm wondering if I could have done that with my calculator and substituting in. I bet I could have. Let me get rid of all the garbage. And let's just take some number like 5 and stow it into x. And one of them, let's see what I got here. It was x plus, oh, there's an i, i squared minus 
x minus i squared. Oh, 20i. And if I put in 4x i, what do I get? 20i. So you can use your calculator to cheat. Don't cheat too much, though. All right, that's it. There she goes. That's it. If you get 100, please let me know. I really, really, really want to know. I'm curious how many kids use these videos and actually get 100. If I don't get too many people emailing me, I'm just going to make up names anyway. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. Good idea, though. Anyway, um, hopefully this helped. Uh, if you want the next, if you if you're having a hard time finding these videos in orders, I do have them all in in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can look for that, or you can just go to MrKrauseMath.com and click on Regents Review, and uh, they're all right there. All right, guys, it's been fun. It's been real. It's been, not been real fun. It's too early in the morning to be real fun. Peace out. Have fun storming the castle. Rock on. Keep working hard. Summer's almost around the corner. Bye.